From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Father, the companionship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Welcome to the celebration of this Eucharist on this feast of Saint Jean Baptiste, Saint John the Baptist. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from three donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Saint Mary of the Purification Parish in Mount Forest, Ontario, in memory of her husband who passed away on the 26th of June 2012, for deceased relatives and friends and for those who have no one to pray for them. The second is an anonymous donor in thanksgiving for favors received by the, by the intercession of Our Lady, undoer of the knots. The, the third is Mrs. Esperanza Fernandez from, and family from Mississauga, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of Augustine Nativity Fernandez and the deceased members of the Fernandez and De Lima families and for the abandoned souls. Our thanks go out to the donors of this gift. Now to celebrate this Eucharist on this great feast of St. John the Baptist who came to proclaim Jesus, let us ask him through, the, through his intercession to prepare us to celebrate this Eucharist. <coughs> you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us glorify God as we say, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who raised up St. John the Baptist to make ready a nation fit for the Christ the Lord, give your people the grace of spiritual joys and direct the hearts of all the faithful into the ways that are salvation and peace. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He, hid, he made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And the Lord said to me, you are my servant, Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity, yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him, for I am honored in the sight of the Lord, 
and my God has become my strength. The Lord says, it is too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations so that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The time came for Elizabeth to give birth, and she bore a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown this great mercy to her, and they rejoiced with her. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and were going to, get, to name him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said, no, he is to be called John. 
They said to her, none of your relatives has this name. Then they began motioning to his father to find out what name he wanted to give them. He asked for a writing tablet and wrote, his name is John. <clears throat> and all were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened and his tongue freed, and he began to speak, praising God. Fear came over all the neighbors, and all these things were talked about throughout the entire hill country of Judea. All who heard them pondered and said, what then will, be this will this child become? For indeed, the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong, and he was in, wilderness, in the wilderness until the day he appeared publicly to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. We usually celebrate the feasts of saints on the day they died. But St. John the Baptist celebrates two feasts. One, his beheading on the 29th of August, and the second, the day of his birth. His mother Elizabeth was six months pregnant, and therefore it was six months before the birth of Jesus at Christmas that we celebrate the birth of John the Baptist. It coincides with the summer solstice, when the days, when it's the biggest or the longest day in the world, um, of the year, and gradually the days will get shorter. Don't panic, winter is not yet here. But you go up into Tukta Yuktuk and to the Arctic Circle, where Sister Faye and her little congregation that follows this mass, that's the only mass they get, and it's 24 hours of sunshine. In fact, the little children don't have an idea uh, whether it's day or night. In fact, one of them was playing at 12 o'clock, and somebody said, you should be in bed. You know it is 12. And the little girl looked up and said, 12 a.m. or 12 p.m.? And six months later, it's the winter solstice, when the days begin to grow longer. And it's fitting, very symbolic, because John the Baptist said he must increase and I must decrease. The call of Jesus followed very much the call and the life of John the Baptist himself. Here was a man who was homeless. He had no visible means of support. If he was in Toronto today, he would be carded or arrested because he has no fixed address and he would be a vagrant. And yet, in the time of Jesus, it was a sign of a person not tied down to material things. And Jesus saw this, and he saw how free he was, and he saw how boldly he proclaimed the word of God. And this would shape Jesus' own preaching. Later on, he would say, foxes, of the, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head basing himself on John the Baptist right over here. Our first reading from Isaiah, what didn't have John the Baptist in mind, but it is almost like Isaiah pictured him. Even before he was born, he was chosen in the womb. And we know the story of how when Mary came, Elizabeth says, as you approach, the child in my womb leapt for joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And then Isaiah says, his mouth will be as sharp as a sword, as Maisie Henry read in our first reading. And John the Baptist would use words that would cut to the, right to the heart of the matter. And finally, he spoke of a prophet who was like a polished arrow in the quiver. Indeed, John the Baptist, looking at John the Baptist, you might say he was anything but polished. He looked uncultured, uncivilized, and even barbaric. But he was polished in the sense that he was chosen for this great task that he was given. So what was special about John the Baptist? Jesus, when he was teaching and preaching, he saw Nathaniel in the distance. He saw him under a tree, and he said, here is a man without any guile. But when he spoke of John the Baptist, he said, of all the sons born of women, there is no one greater than John the Baptist. 
and indeed how true. No one greater than John the Baptist because he could preach with freedom. He had no fear of anybody and he would tell things just as it is. Recently, I was having lunch with 87-year-old Mrs. Sheila Lawler and she says, I say it as it is. Not as I see it, because when I see it, it might be with my prejudices, my background, my own way of life and the baggage that I carry, but I see it as it is means I see it and I will speak of it with all its integrity. John the Baptist came and soon he would say, a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. The Lord had appeared on the scene it was time for John to depart, and he did. Jesus came on the scene and began to preach the word of God. Like St. Paul, John the Baptist could say, I have fought the good fight, I have run the course, I have kept the faith. I've kept the faith. Now it is a time to disappear. And that is an example for you and for me, a man of integrity, a man of stamina, a man that spoke what he had to speak. May God bless you and bless me as we continue to be prophets in our world today. Let us pray. We pray for, to Jesus Christ for strength. As you called your faithful ones, O Lord, mercifully grant them faith and perseverance. We pray to the Lord. Direct our leaders according to your will and help them to keep peace in our world. We pray to the Lord. You provide bread for the hungry crowd. Teach us to share all that we have with the needy in our world. We pray to the Lord. For our three sponsors who have sponsored this Mass, in thanksgiving to God for their generosity and for their personal intentions, we pray to the Lord. For all of you who have written in asking for prayers, those suffering from Parkinson's, those suffering from cancer, those who are, have no means, physical means of support, and for those who care for them, we pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us and continue to give us day by day through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Through to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Yes. Lord God, be pleased to accept these gifts that we offer to you with humble and with contrite hearts. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <coughs> We place these offerings on your altar, O Lord, to celebrate with fitting honor the nativity of him who both foretold the coming of the world's savior and pointed him out when he came, Jesus who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. In John the Baptist, we praise your greater glory, for you consecrated him for a singular honor among those born of, a woman, of women. 
His birth brought great rejoicing. Even in the womb, he leapt for joy at the coming of human salvation. He alone of all the prophets pointed to the Lamb of Redemption. And to make holy the flowing waters, he baptized the very author of baptism and was privileged to bear him supreme witness by the shedding of his blood. And so with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory as with one voice we sing. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by, the shedding by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, the bishops across Canada, and all the clergy and this entire people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us share with one another a sign of this peace and friendship. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us and all our dear ones unto life everlasting. Let us pray. Having feasted at the banquet of the heavenly Lamb, O Lord, grant that finding joy in the nativity of St. John the Baptist, your church may know as the author of her rebirth, the Christ whose coming John foretold. Jesus, who lives and reigns, one God forever and ever, together with the Father and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been celebrated. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. Thanks. Our thanks to our three donors for the gift of this Mass. Come and that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick.